In today's video, we're going to be taking some pictures of some HO scale figures, really tiny little figures made for model trains. I'm going to be uh, putting them in some fun and whimsical situations and shooting them with my macro lens. So stick around and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and the very first thing that I want to do today is to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from everybody here at Adapt Looks. Um, today is Christmas Day, the video came out on Christmas Day, so I want to do something a little bit fun, a little bit whimsical, a little bit festive maybe. Um, we're shooting HO scale figures. Now these are the tiny little figures that you see for model railways. Um, they fit into the dioramas at the correct scale for the trains and the cars and the trains and things like that but that's not what we're going to be doing today we're shooting these guys uh, in amongst full-size real-life objects I think that's where the fun of this style of photography comes from uh, seeing that difference in scale between a real-life object and the tiny little characters interacting with it it's a very popular type of uh, photography especially amongst macro photographers especially when you want to go out and do something a little bit more fun a little bit less serious uh, than maybe insects or plants or flowers uh, putting one of these little characters in amongst a scene can just add a little bit of extra interest and a little bit of extra fun so that's exactly what we're going to be doing today i'm going to grab a few figures i'll show you what i've got in just a moment and uh, my camera and a few household objects and we're going to see what kind of scenes we can create. So for my first set of figures, I've got these little firemen here. Um, they're officially called uh, firemen with red chemical resistant suits and accessories. Uh, so I'm going to be using these guys as hazmat, hazardous material uh, cleanup crew. Um, you can see a couple of firemen here getting dressed into their suits. We're not going to be using those two. We'll stick with these four guys here because uh, they've got some nice poses and I think we can make use of them uh, with some larger objects as well. Uh, now I'm actually having to show you these guys using my macro lens because uh, the scale is absolutely tiny. This is a 10 pence piece and you can see that they are only just a little bit smaller than that 10 pence. Um, so that's going to make uh, manipulating these guys very, very fiddly. Um, but despite their size, they have uh, a lot of detail. They've each got a unique number on their backs. Uh, they're all quite nicely painted. And that's because I've paid for uh, some really nice uh, figures. You can get bundles of hundreds of these guys uh, if you don't mind uh, a bit of a more slapdash painting style, um, but if you get some specific sets uh, they can be really quite well made. Now I'm going to set these guys up in a scene and being that it's Christmas and there's lots of wine around I thought it would be fun to have them clearing up some red wine. So I've got a little glass just here I'm going to spill a little bit onto my table and have these guys placed to be clearing it up. Now I've got my first little setup here. My camera is back over here looking at quite a low angle. Um, I've tried a couple of different angles for these guys. Um, so not completely uh, ground level, but looking down a little bit um, onto my spilled wine coming out of my wine glass. Uh, I've got two guys sat over here trying to open a barrel. One guy crouching down at the front and another guy just looking on. And I've spread them out so that there's something to look at in every part of the frame including the wine spilling out towards the camera. Uh, now I think that is a pretty good setup but uh, what really makes it interesting is the lighting. As you can see here we've got the Adapt Look Studio uh, sat on a little mini tripod and I've got a few different lighting arms coming in from different angles. 
Uh, my key light over here has got a uh, diffuser on the front of it, which is just softening the light on the characters themselves and on that spilled wine on the floor. Now that left the background looking a little bit dark and a little bit plain for my liking. So I've brought another white lighting arm actually shining down through the glass and through the little bit of wine that's in the bottom of the glass uh, to create a big red uh, glow at the base of the glass. This gives the whole thing a little bit more color um, and makes the lighting on the ground just a little bit more, more interesting as well. Uh, finally, I've got a light back here, which is just lighting some more of this table so that it doesn't descend completely back into darkness. Now, all of that is completely optional. You can, of course, have it uh, descend into darkness as if these guys were working at night, perhaps by some mobile lighting. Um, but I've taken a few different variations of this shot and I'm pretty happy with the results. I think it looks quite fun, especially if you can recognize this as the stem of a wine glass, you'll quite quickly realize that these guys aren't what they seem to be, they're in fact much smaller. Photographing tiny little subjects like this comes with a challenge. I mention it in a lot of our macro tutorials, and that is depth of field. It's a telltale giveaway that something is really small when you have a very shallow depth of field. So when it comes to our characters, there's two ways to approach this. You can either emphasize that uh, effect of them being really tiny in a much larger world by foregoing any kind of focus stacking and aiming for a very shallow depth of field. However, if you want to make them seem a little bit larger and maybe the objects around them uh, oversized, uh, maybe trick some people into thinking that they're bigger than they actually are, a good way to do that is to focus stack and try and eliminate that depth of field, that telltale sign that something is a macro photo. So I've been doing both. I've been uh, focusing down and uh, taking a picture uh, focused on that one kneeling down guy. He's the main uh, subject in my photos. I wanted to draw the viewer's eye down to him, but I've also been focus stacking and getting all of the characters in focus, uh, maybe to uh, uh, get a little bit more uh, believability about the scene, but also just to get a little bit more sharpness and show off some of the detail. Say hello to Bimo, uh, one of the two sources of cat hair that you occasionally see on my shirts, uh, and certainly a lot of the scratching and meowing noises that go on in the background of some of my videos. Uh, these guys are going to be the uh, subject of my next photo, believe it or not. Uh, I have some uh, scale models that I think would be perfect with a very uh, giant, very scary cat in the background. So let me show you around my next scene. I've got my camera over here in uh, portrait orientation because we're going to be looking straight across onto the edge of the table where we have some children throwing snowballs. They actually came with a little uh, snowman as well, but I don't think we're using him. We're just going to use the kids. Now I've done something a little bit differently here. I've actually got two coasters and a, uh, a run of sticky tape across the floor uh, just to stick the characters down a little bit uh, because of the, um, the angle of the camera you can't actually see that tape so it's just going to hold them up because we're going to have a visitor. Uh, now I've got a big box of treats here uh, because I'm going to be placing a treat down just here and letting the cats come and find them and putting their face right in the background as if the kids are throwing snowballs at a giant snowball. Uh, so whether or not this is going to go well uh, remains to be seen, but I think it'd be quite a fun shot if I can get the cats to behave. I did get a few shots of our snowballers with cats in the background. Whether or not those uh, cat expressions are going to work for the type of image I had in mind, uh, I'm not sure. But the cats have certainly had enough Christmas treats for now. They're running around causing all sorts of trouble. Uh, I'm going to move on to my next static subject, which should be a little bit easier. My next shot is of this tiny little Santa. Uh, it's actually called um, Santa or Father Christmas in Copenhagen. Uh, I think he's quite funny. He's got uh, no trousers on and one boot missing, um, but I think it's quite a fun little model and I've placed him over on my uh, dining table here um, amongst a few little bits of 
uh, Christmas wrapping. Um, obviously the Christmas tree is in the background here so we've got some lovely bokka uh, happening in the background and I've actually got the Adaptalux control pod just balancing not attached to anything at all uh, just supported by the uh, the two white lighting arms um, on the front there and they're just bending over lighting Santa himself and also lighting those wrapping bits. Uh, so I think that's quite a fun little image. I'm going to try a couple of different poses with Santa and see what else I can get as well. I was trying to create a sort of cityscape with my Santa overlooking the lights of a city, taking his boots off perhaps after a very long night of delivering presents. Um, I wanted to use the uh, the lights of my Christmas tree to create the lights of the city using the bokeh um, from the distance, but also from the aperture. Aperture makes a huge amount of difference in the size of the bokeh from something like festive lights. Um, you can see here as I'm changing the size of my aperture, the size of those bokeh balls are changing along with the exposure. If you'd like a little bit more information about how to make the most out of your festive bokeh, we've got a couple of videos from previous Christmases. I'll link them up in the top right hand corner. For my very last set of figures, I've got a tiny little Snow White and all of her seven dwarves. I'm going to take a picture of them uh, mining some sweets, and also I've got a big shiny red apple, which I'm pretty sure plays a part in, uh, in the film, so I'm going to get a picture of Snow White with her apple as well. Snow White's seven dwarves, and there are seven, you can count them, uh, they were the hardest ones yet to uh, keep standing upright. Um, I used the sellotape trick again and tried to strategically hide the sellotape um, by using the little sweets to hide the edges. I did do a little bit of cloning work as well. Hopefully it's not too obvious, but even if it were, it's just a bit of a fun uh, image anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you can see that they're stuck to the ground. I've had a huge amount of fun playing around with my HO scale figures. I think the little hazmat guys in their orange suits were my favourite simply because they've got more um, practical poses and it's easier to uh, find ways for them to interact with the environment. But let me know down in the comments uh, which styles you prefer, the more um, festive ones or the more practical ones. Um, I'm not sure if I got anything uh, believable, uh, but <laughs> I'll settle for fun and a little bit festive. If we have any model train enthusiasts or experts in this type of photography uh, in the comments, do let me know whether there are different things that I could be doing, what is the best way to stick the models down and keep them stood upright, and how do you place them around in these larger objects. I'd love to know for next time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you're here for new macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the new year. There will be lots of new videos in 2022. If you enjoyed this one, give it a like. I'll take that as a Merry Christmas to the Adaptalux team as well. But for now, that's all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching. Merry Christmas and I'll see you next time.